Good morning, everybody. Welcome to yet another weather forecast. We've got a couple of days of severe weather starting today, actually, potentially going all throughout the week. Now, the first couple of bouts of severe weather aren't going to be anything too crazy. But as we get into around the 30th and the 31st, it does seem like our chances for severe weather are going to go up a little bit. And in fact, our storms of interest are starting to come into the range of accuracy. You can think of models as something like this. So if I push this all the way into the future, back to what we were talking about this storm yesterday this is pretty much like a full court shot in basketball not really in the range of accuracy and your chances of making it are pretty low but as we go closer and closer to when today is and look at these models then we're starting to at least like where we're at right now at around day four or day five we are right around the half court so we can shoot it and make it there's definitely a chance, but we're still not quite in the range of accuracy. We, we, we want to be getting up there real close so we can make that that layup or if you got hops, a, a dunk. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. But before we do, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you do end up enjoying this video. And yeah, here's the uh, the GS. This is a the American model here. This models like uh, hamburger, steak, fries, all that kind of stuff. By the way, I think French fries are apparently French. <laughs> and as you can see on our day one forecast here, we do have a couple of areas. So this is going to be for today where severe weather is possible. And in fact, we already have some severe weather going on over here into Iowa and Missouri. And that will spread out through the, the east throughout the day into Illinois and kind of be in this area here. And then further down to the south, we have a marginal and a slight risk. This is mainly going to be for a large to very large hail is going to be possible down here, kind of like what we had yesterday here into southern Texas. And going into tomorrow, we got a little bit of a chance there uh, for severe weather as well. Uh, kind of in the same areas, a little bit further up to the north, more into like the northern Ozarks and the northern plains and the Great Lakes there. And then also down here in Texas, Louisiana and Arkansas yet again. A lot of this is going to be for hail, maybe a couple instances of some damaging winds. That's pretty much about it. And then the next day after that, it's kind of looking the same here. So if we come back back over to our models our gfs model you can see that we do have some storms over there and those are going to continue uh, throughout the day and kind of move off to the east into the ohio valley they don't really look like much here but the gfs is a little bit of a lower resolution model i can assure you that some of these little green dots out here will be some storms with some potential for severe weather and then further down at the south you can see that there's definitely some activity there as we go to 4 p.m down there into southern texas and that will eventually try to move into corpus christi that storm kind of moves through potentially causing some flooding out there so watch out for that potential as well got some more storms up there in the ohio valley and then eventually as we move into the 28th you can see that these storms kind of meander a little bit to the east and then another little boundary here sets up where some small chances for severe weather will be possible now as i continue to push this throughout the 28th and into the 29th you can see there is our area of interest kind of meandering here into the united states over there in oklahoma and kansas and typically when we have a storm like this uh like what's about to be possible here on the 29th typically we do see some chances for severe weather our surface base cape is certainly there you can see here on the gfs there is about a thousand joules per kilogram coming all the way from texas through oklahoma into kansas and if you look at other models they all kind of agree here that enough instability will be there for saturday but there is one thing that is kind of keeping uh, these storms a little bit at bay if we come over here to our capping inversion as you can see we pretty much have a pretty stout cap here and I spent I spent I don't even know what kind of word I was trying to say there I was trying to say is uh especially i think or essentially but then it kept on coming out as esp <laughs> i don't know it's still early earlier than i usually make a forecast i got some things i got to do this morning that i have to get this forecast out and get to it but <laughs> but yeah as you can see and there's a capping inversion in place and basically what that is is a cap on the atmosphere or you can think of it as a bottle of water or even a cap that's on your head let's use my cap as an example here essentially my hair is the storm and in fact it kind of looks like a storm this morning. And in order for the storm to fire and to, you know, get higher into the atmosphere like my hair, uh, I need to remove this cap. But the cap is keeping the hair or the cap is keeping the storm from going all crazy. <laughs> that's why I wear the cap. And that's why caps are good when you're not looking for severe weather. Now, if we compare these to the other models, you can see that most of the models are in agreement here of a pretty stout cap uh, here for Saturday. So although there will be a cap in place, place for most of the day there is a possibility still that this could break so if the cap does break what are we
we going to be talking about here? So if you come over to our 300 millibar range, you can see our divergence is mainly back over here into Texas, going into Oklahoma and into Kansas. A low pressure system is fo focused right around in this area. So it's going to be right around here. We're watching for severe weather where that capping inversion is. But if we do get it to try to do something, there will be a little bit of upper level shear in the area and also a little bit of lower level shear. And you can see our lower level shear is coming from the south up to the north. So there will be some changing of winds with height, aka some shear and spin in the atmosphere. So everything really is in place here for a severe weather event. But as you can see, the SBC doesn't really have a whole lot of confidence in this day, and neither do I. If that capping inversion stays strong down here further to the south where some of our best kinematics are, then yes, there will still be some severe weather possible up here into like Missouri and Iowa. It'll definitely be on the weaker side because it'll be away from some of our best moisture that's going to be with this storm. But if that capping inversion does for some reason break, you could definitely see a chance for severe weather maybe further down to the south, maybe something a little bit more stout. So some things can definitely change here on the 20th. Now, as we move into the 30th, this is where things get a little bit interesting here. And know the the size of a slight risk on these. I know a lot of people have been saying that like this is a huge slight risk and that means something. And it kind of does. It means that a lot of people have the chance here to see severe weather. And we'll be going over the reason why here in just a little bit. But by no means does that mean this storm is going to be more or less dangerous. It's just kind of saying we, we have about 15% confidence here that this is going to happen in this area. And you'll probably see some severe weather if you live somewhere within this yellow circle. This does not denote intensity in any way. You got to look at the models and try to figure that out. Yeah, as we move our models into the 30th here, you can see that we're going to be having a low pressure system kind of skirt through the plains and then up into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. You can see we get a little bit of a frontal boundary draped down to the south. And first thing that's important on looking on this is again, coming back up into the area where planes fly and babies are kicking in the back of your seat and screaming and whining in the plane, you can see that a lot of our divergence, you see uh, a little bit uh, there on the northern side, you got these wind barbs, these little flag looking things, um, looking up into this direction. So that is where the wind is going up there. And if we come further down to the south, you can see these little flag looking things are going in this direction, right? So there's definitely a difference in that direction. And what that essentially does in the area in between that is like when you push the water aside in a bathtub or in a pool or in the ocean, if you're rich, the water moves out. But what happens in the center? It rushes back up and kind of makes a splash. And that's kind of what's happening here in the atmosphere, except for that splash is a storm forming. And we call that forcing. And you can see that there is some broad area of forcing all the way throughout this region. So that's one of the reasons why we have such a large area for severe weather possible today. But you can see uh, even up here in the 300 millibar heights, this storm is having uh, some issues. It's a little bit on the weaker side of storm. Coming to the 500 millibar heights here, you can see that as we move uh, into Sunday here, the upper level winds are going to be there, but they're not going to be overly powerful here. We're talking about, you know, at least for the 500 millibar range, anywhere from like four out of I mean 47 to about 60 to 70 knots that's around like a, a mid-range upper level jet and maybe a little bit on the weaker side of ones so there's definitely some wind there and we kind of use this to try to imagine where our spin is going to be when we mix that with our lower level winds and as you can see for a lot of this area we're talking about 30 to 40 knots of that lower level shear so again not super strong but there is some there but further down to the south there really isn't that much of that lower level Year. So we might have a little bit of a bigger hail problem, maybe further to the south, up into Arkansas and Missouri, with our strongest tornado threat being somewhere up in this region. Because if we do get that instability start to interact with all of these factors that we just talked about, which we do have we're reaching up into Illinois, that's going to be where our strongest tornado threat is, where our strongest shear is, is where it is going to be. But one last little thing to point out is as we move, you see where these wind barbs are moving in the 500 millibars. Um, in that area where the shear and that moisture overlaps, you can see they're kind of moving out of the west here to the east northeast. And as we come over to our lower level winds, they're doing the same thing. So we're mainly going to be talking about a linear line of storms and potentially a couple areas where there's going to be linear lines of storms, maybe a little bit more of a discrete mode further down to the south with some larger to very large hail being possible. But further up to the north, we're going to be talking about that threat for those Midwest QLCS damaging wind and QLCS tornado 
tornado type storms as it moves throughout this area because our wind vectors are parallel instead of being perpendicular. I think the biggest chance for this is probably going to be damaging winds and large hail uh, with a little bit of a tornado threat there further up to the north. And again, this is going to be on the 30th. And moving into day five, we have a little bit of a slight risk over here. You can see that's going to be for areas like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, North and South Carolina, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, parts of Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. And if we push our model into range here, you can see that this little frontal boundary continues off to the east uh, as we move into the 31st. This is around th the 4 p.m. here on the 31st. So let's go check out our environment uh, as this moves off to the east. So yeah, you can see that difluence aloft is still there, and it's still pretty large. So that's why we're expecting a large area here of severe weather being possible. And our 500 millibar winds are a little bit stronger here on the GEFS. I mean, sorry, on the GFS. Um, and uh, kind of more in place here where some of our instability could be. But as you can see, our wind barbs, again, are pretty parallel here. So we're mainly going to be talking about some line segments of this storm. Not a whole lot of discrete storms are going to be possible with a setup like this. But uh, there is some lower level shear within that area. So we could have some embedded tornadoes in a lines of storms here. Maybe a 2 to 5% uh, for tornadoes as this comes through. If this forecast hold. Look at some of our other model runs here. You can see that there is quite the wide range, though, of where this storm is going to be and just how strong it is. And the GFS is kind of on the weaker side, at least uh, for Monday. So just keep that in mind. There's still a lot of things to figure out uh, on Monday. I mean, this is about five days out. So, and you can see the model consistency is pretty off. You know, the GFS has got a low pressure system all the way over there. And the Euro has the low pressure system a lot stronger and all the way up here into Canada. So uh, we also see some of these differences as well on the day before. So there's still a lot of little things to kind of work out with both of these days. But the one that's most uncertain is definitely going to be Monday. But as we come back down to the surface and look at our storm food for Monday, uh, you can see that there is some instability out there. Most of our instability is again away from the shear, but there is a chance that we could get a little bit more as we get closer. So still big questions. If we come over and look at our other model runs that are stronger with the storm, you can see that there really isn't much of a change uh, on that instability. Maybe a little bit more back over here in Kentucky and West Virginia at the earlier portions of this forecast. Maybe a little bit of a slower trough there uh, in a court uh, in comparison to the GFS. So uh, still some big differences, still things to work out uh, as we get closer to Monday. But there is definitely you know some potential there for some severe weather nonetheless. So as you can see, size really doesn't matter when it comes to severe weather. It's more about what the model's saying in terms of how strong the severe weather is going to be. Yes, a large area of severe weather is going to be possible. It could be pretty widespread. And there will be some chances for some hail, tornadoes, and damaging winds. But are we talking about a super outbreak or something that is going to slam you? No. <laughs> Do we even be using that word at this point? No. Absolutely not. Confidence isn't even high yet. So there's no point in really putting definite words on this storm just yet. A lot's going to change by the time we get here. One thing to keep an eye on over the next couple of days across the United States is going to be hot over here in the West. But eventually that's going to start to shift down to the Southeast where we could have uh, pretty far above normal temperatures down here into parts of Texas going into Alabama. I mean, we're talking about anywhere from 90 degree temperatures to 80 degree temperatures the more you go to the East. Okay. If you live anywhere in the Central to Southern, um, you know, United States, there is definitely going to be a warm trend here. But I do appreciate everybody for tuning in. I really do. Thank you guys for continuing to trust me with your weather forecasts. And I will see you guys uh, on the next video. Peace.